The Wikipedia article on Taiwan leaves out a bunch of stuff which are actually kind of important to understanding the history of Taiwan. So today, we will look at the entire history of Taiwan to the best of my knowledge up till the Japanese take over. Let's go! Our story starts a long time ago. Taiwan was not an island, but connected to the mainland by a land bridge. This allowed animals and people to cross over. Then around 10,000 years ago, a bunch of ice melted, sea levels rose, and Taiwan became an island. The people who crossed over were stuck on the island, farming and fishing. Around 5,000 years ago, a bunch of cultures developed and lived all over the island. They had some cool stuff like tattoos and harmonicas, and they were the Austronesians. Later, they also spread across all of this area by using canoes. Meanwhile, civilization in China began to grow and kingdoms began to fight each other. Fast forward to the Three Kingdoms era, where the first possible reference to the island of Taiwan appears. The Kingdom of Wu supposedly sent troops to this place called Yizhou that might be Taiwan, but no one really knows. 90% of the sailors died on the voyage, but the survivors still managed to kidnap several thousand natives. The next time Taiwan was possibly mentioned was during the Sui Dynasty, where Emperor Yang supposedly attacked Liu Chu Guo or Ryukyu in Japanese. But again, this place may or may not be Taiwan. In the Song Dynasty, Han Chinese started to settle on Penghu, which is here. It was later annexed by the Southern Song Dynasty in 1171. Since the natives had nothing much to give the Chinese, relations were well, not very good. The Mongols then arrived on the scene and invaded the Jurchen Jin Dynasty, the Song Dynasty, as well as Korea. The Mongols also sent emissaries to Japan, demanding that the Japanese pay tribute, which they refused. The Mongols were pissed, and decided to punish the Japanese. They invaded Japan in 1274 but failed. In 1281, they invaded Japan again, but then Japan used some witchcraft to summon a typhoon and destroyed the fleet just like the last time. After the disaster, Mongols retreated to Penghu Islands. They wanted to invade the Ryukyus and then Japan from there. Subsequently, they established it as part of the Yuan Dynasty. The Yuan Dynasty was overthrown in 1368 and the Ming Dynasty was established. It was business as usual until 1384. The Hong Wu Emperor, I suspect, got a hit on the head and suddenly decided to ban all private trade conducted by sea. As a result, all seaward explorations were abandoned along with the islands. In 1544, the first Portuguese explorers passed the island and gave it the name Ilha Formosa, which meant beautiful island. Soon after the Ming re-established control over Penghu because they realized leaving islands unoccupied near you is a recipe for disaster. Then, the good old Dutch East India Company arrived and wanted to trade with the Ming, but was rejected as the Ming had already been trading with the Portuguese in Macau since 1535. This pissed off the Dutch so much that they decided to attack the Portuguese in Macau, but they were blown off course by a typhoon. The Dutch attacked Macau again, and again, and again, but failed once again and settled on building a fort on the Penghu Islands instead. From there, they attempted to bully the Ming into submission, which is a terrible idea because if you want to trade with someone, attacking their ships and being annoying isn't the way to go, especially if they are way more powerful than you. The Dutch found out about this the hard way and were booted off Penghu in 1624 and retreated to Taiwan, building their first fort there called Fort Zealandia. The Spanish saw the Dutch presence on Taiwan as a threat to their colony in the Philippines and thus built their own fort on the northern part of Taiwan called Fort San Salvador. The Dutch then tried to turn Taiwan into a Dutch colony and started with the tried and tested tactic of making friends with the natives. In 1642, the Dutch managed to boot the Spanish out of their holdings in the north and begin to try and subdue the natives. Pirates, including the War Coat, operated along the coast of China as the Ming no longer had a navy and they often used Taiwan as a hiding place. One such pirate, Zheng Zhilong, was the most powerful and built European-style ships with European weapons. 
And so, the Ming government recruited him as an admiral instead of trying to fight him. With an official title, he would help to defeat the Dutch fleets and gain a monopoly over the entire trade in the region, becoming the richest man in China with an estimated income of three to four times that of the Dutch East India Company. Meanwhile, tucked away in one corner of Taiwan was a native cross-tribal kingdom called the Da Tu Wang Guo or Da Tu Kingdom, which was made of 27 villages of Aboriginal tribes. The king was called the Belly King. Whether he had a belly or not, I do not know. The Belly King agreed to submit to the Dutch VOC after the Dutch invaded them in 1645. Just across the sea, the Ming Dynasty was in chaos. Years of famine, disease and drought had taken its toll, and sensing weakness, the Manchus invaded, the peasants revolted, and it was all round trouble. In 1661, Zheng Zhilong's kid, Kossinger, was forced out of his base in Xiamen by the advancing Manchus. He in turn besieged the Dutch fort, capturing it, and established the Kingdom of Tung Ning in hopes of using it to restore the Ming Dynasty. The Aboriginals under the Dutch rule revolted as well and burned their Christian schoolbooks and beheaded them. Just four months later, Kossinger died and his son took over and raided the coastal towns for supplies. The new Manchu Qing dynasty then decided to starve the Ming loyalists by moving everyone out of those towns. The lack of an official heir caused the struggle for succession. The nightmare of every kingdom. This was when the Qing took the chance and invaded. Zheng Ke Shuang, one of Kossinger's grandkids, decided to surrender to the Qing and thus the island became part of Chinese territory for the first time. The Qing made Taiwan a prefecture in 1683 as part of Fujian province. He mostly left Taiwan alone as administration was expensive. The sea ban was also lifted and the 100,000 immigrants surged to Taiwan. Thinking that it was perhaps a bad idea, the sea ban was reimposed and most of the immigrants were deported back. This, however, did not stop the smugglers from settling in Taiwan. Immigration was restricted until the 1760s under the Qing. After restrictions were relaxed, people moved to Taiwan in droves. By 1811, there were over 2 million Han Chinese in Taiwan. Taiwanese society at this point was feudal in nature and involved large proprietors, landlords, and property tycoons. Conflict with the natives over land and water was common, and there was often struggle between different ethnic groups. Because Taiwan was in the age of the Qing Empire at this point, administration was lax, and there was frequent unrest along with three major revolts. The island was still not under the full control of the Qing, and there were still aborigines that the Qing regarded as barbarians beyond their control on the east of the island. Taiwan faced threats due to its strategic location as colonial powers such as Britain and France frequently attempted or considered invading the island to use as a base. In 1841, the British attempted but failed to take Keelung and Wuqi in the First Opium War. The Second Opium War broke out 15 years later in 1856 and ports in Taiwan were forced to open up as part of the unequal treaties. To add to Taiwan's precarious position, natives massacred a group of Ryukyun sailors who were shipwrecked on the east coast of Taiwan in 1871 due to a misunderstanding. This would serve as the impetus for a Japanese expedition to Taiwan in 1874, exposing the Qing dynasty's weakness. In 1844, the Sino-French War broke out and French troops were sent to occupy Penghu and northern Taiwan. Liu Mingchuan was appointed by the Qing to defend the island and did so successfully. Taiwan was upgraded to a province in 1885 and he was appointed as the governor. From here, Taiwan started to see development, with the first railway from Keelung to Xinzhu being opened. Trade was booming by this time, and exports such as tea and camphor led to growth in the northern parts of Taiwan as more people started their lives on the island. In 1895, the first Sino-Japanese war broke out to see who could establish their influence over Korea. During this period, Japan had made great advances after the Meiji Restoration and was westernizing fast. In contrast, a stagnating Qing dynasty was whooped by the Japanese, leading to the Treaty of Shimonoseki, where Taiwan was ceded to Japan along with some other concessions. 
the local Taiwanese rejected this and established the Democratic State of Taiwan, or the Republic of Formosa, to resist Japanese annexation. This led to the outbreak of the Yi Wei War, which is the largest war fought in Taiwan so far. It involved 30,000 Japanese troops and 130,000 Taiwanese, lasting around five months. The Japanese eventually won and ruled Taiwan as a colony. And that's the history of Taiwan up till Japanese colonization. If you want to find out what happens after that, be sure to check out the other video here.